Okay, hi pals, let's talk about the books that I read in May. Hi, if you're new here, I'm Casey, I talk about booktube stuff, and today I just wanna talk about the books I read in May. So quickly, let's go over all of my star ratings for the month, and then I'll move on to superlatives. I gave no rating to Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer, Salt Houses by Hala Alian. I had no one or two stars for the month, so let's move on to the three stars, and we're gonna start with Audition by Ryu Murakami, Orochi, Volumes 3 and 4 by Kazuo Umez, and Education and Malice by S.T. Gibson, Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca, and The September House by Carissa Orlando. I shockingly had no four stars for the month either, so we're gonna move on to five stars, and we're gonna start that with Chainsaw Man, Volume 9 by Tetsuki Fujimoto, Earthlings by Sayaka Murata, and The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemison. Okay, moving on to superlatives. Um, I am going to first talk about my most disappointing, and I'm gonna give this one to Orochi Volume 3. Um, this is the third out of four, I believe, volumes to the series, and honestly, I didn't want to continue reading it after I finished this, even though I gave it three stars. Overall, it lost so much of the magic of what I th think made the first one so interesting. Um, this is continuing to follow Orochi, kind of, she's just following people and like getting in into stories and stuff like that. And in this one, there's more of what happens a lot in the second one, which is just her kind of following people around as weird things happen to them, but she's not really involved in it. And I think that's disappointing. I loved in the first one that she was very involved in things. We got to see that she was magical, that there was something going on with her. It was very interesting, it was very engaging. And I just find the just telling stories while she's kind of there, just exposition dumping, to be really fucking annoying to read. And so that was just entirely what the third one was, and I found it very frustrating and very disappointing, and I really had a bad time with it, and so I just, I only continued and finished the series just because there was one more volume and I knew I'd be able to finish it very quickly. Moving on to my most meh for the month and I'm gonna give that to Audition by Ryu Murakami. Um, this is a horror novel. This is old. I believe this was published sometime in the 90s, I think. It says 97. Yes. Copyright 1997, translation 2009. Um, and this is a cult classic horror that I believe also spawned a cult classic horror film that I have not seen. But this is following Aoyama, a man who has been recently widowed and his son and friend decide to encourage him to find another wife. And he doesn't want to do any dating. He thinks as, you know, a man in his early 40s, that's just exhausting. But he's really determined to find a 20 year old girlfriend who he's going to marry and then have babies with so they decide to do, hold an audition process and in this he meets a young woman who then become who then their relationship evolves and it's fairly short I won't say anything else about it but it does get wild by the end um overall this is mad to me because I think that it takes so long it's like I said this is very short I think this is right around 200 pages this is under 200 pages in fact and this takes 95% of the time to get anywhere now it is very engaging it's very interesting and I did think that as far as a story like this is concerned it you can look at it through a very feminist lens of um Aoyama is a terrible human being and we're just getting his perspective as he grooms this young woman to be his bride and <laughs> what happens to him eventually but it just I think it just took too long to get where it was going for my preferences. Moving on to my most surprising for the month and I'm gonna give this to The September House by Carissa Orlando. This is another horror. This is a haunted house story following um I can't remember her name now because I listened to this a couple weeks ago um but following an older woman her and her husband moved into this house several years ago and September is a notoriously rough time for them because the walls bleed the ghosts that inhabit the house begin to exhibit even stranger behavior and there is screaming that starts and the our protagonist she is able to adjust because that's what she's been doing to things her whole life but her husband is not and her husband seemingly has gone missing and their daughters come back to find him um, this was honestly I expected this to be more more thrillery. I had seen some reviews on it and I had looked into it just a little bit last year and overall I just I wasn't that interested in it. I picked it up for a reading challenge and I really thought this was quite good. I thought it was very enjoyable um, as far as haunted house stories are concerned. I liked that it was very ghosty. I like all haunting house styles. 
um, you know, whether the house is an entity in itself or it's the ghosts that give it, you know, it's creepy and horrifying properties. And this one really worked for me because the ghosts were ghosts and they're, and you know, the house was kind of creepy, but it wasn't its own entity. And it honestly didn't stray too far from that. It didn't go too wild for that. And I will say as far as uh, horror is concerned, one of my favorite things about horror as a genre in general is very exemplified in this. Sometimes what we're talking about isn't really what we're talking about. And this one does such a good job of being very overt in what its messaging is while also still staying very on theme. And the biggest surprise to me, I thought we were coming for some kind of stupid plot twist at the end that was going to completely subvert everything that happened up until that point, and we avoided it, and I loved it. I love you, Carissa Orlando, for making that choice. That was an excellent choice. Moving on to my best books for the month, and I'm going to talk about three of them this time because I don't have a lot of books to choose from. Uh, the only nonfiction I read, which is the nonfiction I am going to say is the best nonfiction I read this month, was Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer. This is a nonfiction. Robin Wall Kimmerer is a botanist and uh, sort and also a poet and she really interweaves a lot of Native American tradition, folklore, heritage, and knowledge into this story while also talking about biology and conservation. It is really excellent if you can get your hands on the audiobook. I highly recommend it because that's the way I listen to this and overall I just think that it is so beautifully written and that's what happens sometimes when you have scientists who are also poets at heart and in you know practice. It is it's just beautifully told and I absolutely enjoy this. Okay, the next book I'm going to talk about in my best of the month is going to be The Stone Sky by N.K. Jemisin. Um, if you are new here, then you have not heard me rave about the fifth season, which is absolutely incredible, which everyone else says is absolutely incredible, and it is. And I will say I was a little disappointed in The Obelisk Gate, which is the second book in the series. It just, it, it was second book syndrome. There's too much exposition, not enough happening. It just wasn't as engaging as I wanted it to be. But this, holy shit, what an ending. Um, this is so good. It wraps everything up so well. The questions that need answers are answered. The questions that don't need them aren't answered. And I love that. I love mystery and I love not always having explanations for things. And overall, I think that this is such a terrific wrap up to Ethan's story and to just the story of this world. And it just, it was really captivating to me. And I downright just cried at the at the very end. I thought it was very beautiful and I absolutely loved it. And the last one I'm going to talk about that I'm going to have the hardest time talking about is Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. This is a horror literary fiction. It's a very, it's very confused as far as genres are concerned. Um, <laughs> this is following Natsuki, a young Japanese woman who has a plushy hedgehog that she believes is an alien that is speaking to her and, uh, is from the planet Popinpobobia and is following Natsuki, her stuffed animal, her stuffed hedgehog, and um, her cousin Yu. Yes, her cousin Yu. And it is weird. It is strange. It is crazy at the end. I, <laughs> it is, I, I would, if you, if you're, if this stupid, terrible explanation of the synopsis intrigues you in any way, please look up trigger warnings for this. Um, it's filled with very harsh things and it is a very good look at dissociation and um, sort of maladaptive daydreaming to just, oh, what is the word I am looking for? to cope with reality and oftentimes the terrible things that happen to us. But it's also just crazy by the end and wild. And I had heard that it, by the end, it gets absolutely bonkers and it's so strange. And I fully expected it to go one way and it did not. It absolutely subverted what I thought it was going to do in probably the best way possible, but also in the most disturbing way possible. And it was crazy and I absolutely loved it. And this is going right up there with um, you made a fool of death with your beauty and I'm not going to explain myself category. Um, I love this. It was incredible. Uh, I would not broadly recommend this to people. I think you have to be A in the right mindset or B the right kind of person to love it as much as I did. And I think a lot of people will really fucking hate it.
Okay, those are the 10 books I've read in May. Uh, that's a little bit low for me this month, but honestly, spring is a kind of a hell time for me. So I'm happy I read anything at all. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to do all the algorithm things, like comment and subscribe. If not, I will see you next Friday. Hopefully I missed two weeks because we've just honestly been busy and trying to get our lives back together. So I hopefully will see you next Friday and I hope you're having a wonderful day. Bye pals.